Welcome to the Free From Wall Street Podcast, where we share how we have done over $200 million in real estate deals to create, preserve, and pass on generational wealth without the roller coaster ride of the stock market. If you're ready to start investing with purpose, visit freefromwallstreet.com. But for now, let's dive into this episode. Hard to do. So yeah, I think there's a lot of intersection between just business and and kind of the ministries that you guys are running and the more efficient and effective you can be and how you build and create the foundation of how uh, efficiencies are built into the business. We've done it the right way and we've done it the wrong way. Well, the wrong way first and for many years and then learned along the way that there was more efficient, effective ways to create an organization with a culture of accountability and transparency and efficiency. So what we used to do as entrepreneurs and you guys, I think of ministers as entrepreneurs, right? You have to start from nothing and build something. And then you have to typically find capital to to continue running. And then you need systems and operations to complete the mission, right? So it's not that different in my mind, marketplace ministry or, you know, kingdom battlefield ministry, right? I think it's very much dovetailed together. So what we used to do is go in and say, okay, here's what I need to do. And the EOS system, the entrepreneur operating system, if you, you know, if you need some book recommendations for these things, this is a system of business that you either implement or you don't. You can't go halfway. You can't go 75%. You don't get to use three or four of the tactics and say that this is going to integrate into my system. It's not, right? So if this is not for you, fine. I hope that whatever is working for you is working really well. The most successful business owners that I know run a system very similar to this, if not this. And really, it's just kind of top-down planning, right? And we've all heard the the nuanced cliches of like, you know, failing to plan is is planning to fail and and some of these things. But the, the truth of the matter is that if you're reacting in your business or in your ministry, you're too late. Right? So spending time thinking, forward thinking, and knowing how to plan and plan a process. Now, you have to pivot when things go wrong, right? And that's absolutely always going to be the case. But if you're not spending the time creating the vision and creating the, the annualized plan, the quarterly plan, and then the weekly things, and even down to the daily things that need to get done, you're reacting. And I have been caught flat-footed many a time in business. And every time I react, we lose time or money, frankly. If we are ahead of it and we're putting the systems and processes in place so that we can plan and get ahead of those things, that's where you want to be. So this is very much about that, right? The entrepreneur operating system is very much about how to sit and think and take the time to plan on what you're going to do and then prioritize those plans. And priorities can shift, right? Especially in the world that you guys are in. And even in the world that we're in, but as priorities start to shift, you can you can make a weekly assessment as to whether or not the activities that you're going to do getting implemented will help you or hurt you in achieving those priorities. So the first thing is the accountability chart, right? And Seal, you want to pull up ours? So our so the accountability chart is basically what you think you want the organization to look like. And in the beginning, you will be in every seat right? Because if, especially if you're by yourself, right? Then you're in the visionary seat, you're in the operations seat, you're in the sales seat, you're in the capital raise seat, you're in the, you know, putting the hand to the plow. I mean, you you name it, you can see yourself in all those seats. But what we're trying to do is get to the next step of when I am going to get pulled out of this seat, what is that role going to look like and who is that person and what activities will they be responsible for? So in the beginning of the company, Travis and I sat in every single seat, right? We were the visionary, we were the operator, and then that kind of teed off into acquisitions, dispositions, finance, all these different things, right? But we knew that as we continued to grow and become efficient, we would not be able to do everything, right? And so really what we were doing is saying, okay, what is the next role? What will the acquisitions role do, right? What will the dispositions role do? Are the, you know, if there's a marketing role, who's in charge of the social media platform? Who's in charge of creating the content, right? So like just putting stuff on, on social media is great. 
but what content are you putting on social media? You know, so who's creating that content, who's putting it into PDF format, who's creating the videos, who's uploading it. And these are, these are things that become bottlenecks in your business, right? So we're happy to share this uh, just to give you guys an idea, but we'll just share ours. So, and we color code ours, by the way. So if it's green, the right person is in the right seat. If it's yellow, we're maybe not even sure. Like, yes, we think that the right person's in the right seat, but maybe that could be a future role. And if it's red, it's wrong. Like there's nobody, the, the wrong people are in that seat. And to admit that you have wrong people in wrong seats is not a problem, right? What it does is it helps you expand the vision forward to say, as we move forward, we know that we're looking for this volunteer. We know that we're looking for this person, right? So at the top, you can see me as the visionary, right? I'm leading, I have ideas, I have big relationships, creative problem solving, in charge of the culture, whale hunting, meaning finding big clients and big deals. I lead more on emotion and I deal with town halls, meaning on a monthly basis or a biweekly basis, I'll get in front of the team and give them a, a status report as to what's going on in the business. How are we looking financially? Are we on track or off track for our quarterly and annual goals? And then we'll do a little training exercise for everybody in the organization. And it's basically a rah-rah, like let's go, right? And it just keeps the team fired up. And, and that's part of my role as the visionary. Travis is he's a leader. He's, he's on big relationships and creative problem solving too. He's more in research and development. He's more on logic. He uh, also helps control the culture, but you'll see because we're co-founders, right? We have two kind of at the top as co-owners, but there can only be one visionary. So if you read the EOS books, they talk about visionary and they talk about integrators. No, uh, implementers, right? So you have visionaries and you have implementers, people that have the big vision and if you know a lot of visionary type people like me, you know that where the rubber meets the road is not where I excel. The process is not where I excel. The Excel spreadsheets is not where you want me putting information in. I'm not good at it, right? Somebody just talked about handling a CRM. I can get on the phone and talk to people all day long. Don't expect that conversation to make it into a CRM because that's just not me, right? And know, know thyself, right? And we can talk about some guardrails that you can put in place and some things that you can easily shift around to help you accomplish the goals that need to get accomplished, but maybe not so you're working so, so far outside of your comfort zone that it's uh, mentally or spiritually taxing on you. So uh, that's where you get a integrator like Sean, right? Sean is all about leading, managing, holding people accountable. He's in charge of the profit and loss statements. He's removing obstacles for who? For me. Sean's job is to not tell me no, it's to tell me not now and how. Right. And that wasn't from me. That was from an EOS coach that came in because I was very much happy with Sean telling me no to my big ideas that I thought were fantastic because we couldn't do them yet. But they said, no, you know what? As an integrator, it's not your job to tell the visionary no. It's to tell them how and when. So maybe it's a not right now. Right. But maybe it's a in next quarter or we can revisit this in two quarters because the in integrator needs to see where the rubber meets the road in the next 90 days. How are we implementing some of the vision on a piece by piece basis? So then so that's the leadership piece. Right. And then and then you have the next level is management. What roles are we managing? So for us, it's marketing, it's sales, it's deal management, capital management, meaning how, how does capital move in and out of the business? And then what else is over there? And then operations. Okay. So I'm not going to go through all of these. We're happy to send it out to you guys, but suffice it to say that in these management roles, there needs to be a person in charge of that. So even though I'm not, I, so we've hired a salesperson recently who's now talking to all of our investors, right? And maybe you have somebody that's just in charge of fundraising and that's their outward facing uh, role. If and when that happens, they either need to be accountable for the entire sales process or like you see me, I'm the manager of that. Below this, and this hasn't been updated, this is probably the, not the most recent one, but now that we have somebody in place, the lead capture, the investor follow-up, sales presentations and networking are basically all green now because we put the right person in the right seat but I am still accountable for everything that they do because I'm the sales manager, right? So one of the best things we've ever learned is that if you have two people accountable, nobody's accountable, right? So even if you don't like the fact that you have to relinquish it to somebody else to be accountable for that role, 
right? It still should always come to you from a managerial perspective, but somebody needs to be responsible. If you're not comfortable with them being responsible for it, you need to take responsibility to be responsible for it. And then you need some systems and processes to follow up with what they're doing on a week by week basis and saying, yes, that is getting us closer to our goal or no, it's not getting us closer to the goal. So that's kind of how we create these trees. And then you'll see just because because I'm in charge of sales doesn't mean that I'm doing everything in those roles, right? Sometimes Celia is doing some of these things. Sometimes Justine is doing some of these things and that's okay, right? But I'm, I'm ultimately where the buck stops, right? So if that's my lane, I'm the one that's in charge of everything that happens underneath me. Cool. I'll give it a second right there. Do you guys have any questions so far about how we're organizing some of these things and is it helpful? Yep. Good. I'm seeing nods. Okay. It's even mentioned as well, like know thyself, right? Right people, right seat. A really great tool. Some of you may be familiar uh, with it. It's culture index and I'll add it, I'll pop it into the chat as well. So you can take a, it's, what would you say? It's a mixture between a personality test and a cognitive. Yeah. So <clears throat> culture index is, you know, if you guys have done disc tests in the past, right? D-I-S-C. So DISC tests give you about 65% on average of what a person's personality makeup is, right? So not bad, not great. Culture index has actually been analyzed so much that the Department of Labor will actually allow you to hire and fire on it because it's like 96% accurate. So like it is accurate. Now, as believers, I don't believe that that is a foundational thing that can't be changed. So I, I go back and forth with my cultural index coach about this a lot because He's like, well, this is just it, right? You can't change the stripes. You can't change some, you can't change the zebra stripes. And I believe that's true to an extent, right? But as believers, we'd be remiss to say that that's not true because if you've been saved, you've been changed. So, you know, I think that uh, change can come. For me, I look at it as a good tool as a baseline. Right. So before, when you heard me saying things like I'm not the process oriented guy, if you look at my culture index, this I'm like off the charts with this. I'm in the I'm in the less than one percent of the world of rule following and following process, which, you know, to some of you very high detailed people will sound terrible and scary and what are you doing in business? But the other side of that is because I have no rules associated with how I think, I, I'm not confined by a box of how traditional businesses get run. Or, you know, so it's very creative. It also can crash into the wall from time to time. So that's why you need a balance within your business, right? But it's a very good tool. And I, I think they might have even some nonprofit um, discount pricing for some things. And we might be able to get maybe a mastermind kind of access where one username could get passed along to all of us. Because what it does is it gives you an idea as to uh, four different personality indicators, right? One is drive, meaning are you, if left independently, will you go build a business? Or if left independently, you won't do anything until somebody tells you what to do, right? Where it's not to say that you're not motivated, it's to say that you're not entrepreneurial in the sense that you're going to go do something because you can't help yourself, right? Left alone for 10 minutes, I'm going to build a business. I just can't help myself. That being said, my wife will wait to get told what to do. She's not entrepreneurial in the way that I am, but she's a fantastic process-oriented person, administratively gifted, but would never, she's a great number two, right? She would never be a great number one though, because she wouldn't know where to go. Number two would be extroversion, right? Are you more extroverted? Are you more introverted? And this, what I like about culture index isn't a yes or no, like DISC. It's to what extent along the continuum is somebody like that? And all it means is that the further away from kind of the median line that you go when you test out for these things is the harder it is for you to cross that line. And it's tiring for your, for your brain, right? So it's not to say that I can't fill out an Excel spreadsheet. As a business owner, I obviously have had to. It's taxing for me, right? At the end of the day, I'm more mentally tired when I have to do stuff like that than if I just have to go to a party and talk to a bunch of people about what it is that we do. So you have these different things. And then you have like urgency, like how fast the, do things need to get done within the business? 
Well, there's some roles in your business that you want people to be extremely urgent. Salespeople, capital raisers, people that need to go get on the phone and hammer all of your prospects. You want them to be urgent. You want them to get on the phone, hang up and call somebody else. You don't want your CFO to be that, right? You want them to be slower, more methodical, looking at the numbers, making sure they're not rushing through things. So there's benefits uh, to, to all of these things, but it's just getting an idea. We, we structure and have moved people around. So, so, you know, the right people, right seats piece of this is what if they fit your culture? What if they fit your belief system? What if they have a heart behind exactly what you need, but they're not in the right seat on the bus, right? And this is a Jim's Collin, Jim Collins kind of quote where it's like, you need the right people on the right bus, but then you need the right people in the right seats, right? So a salesperson sitting in uh, a role that's just doing admin is the wrong it's the wrong person, wrong seat. So you, this is why we do these quarterly uh, objectives. One of the EOS things that we do, which is very cool, is literally like GWC, right? And that's in the book. And it's, do they get it? Do they want it? Do they have the capacity for it? So every quarter, we literally sit in a room together and we are extremely transparent about this. Are each of your people in the right seats? <laughs> And we don't let you vote, right? So let's assume we are all in one business, okay? We will hand these out. We'll literally write on a big whiteboard, Stephen, G, W, C, right? Plus, minus, plus, minus, or minus, minus. And everybody in the room gets a vote. And I don't get to talk during it. At the end of the voting, if somebody says that I don't get it or I don't want it or they don't think I have the capacity for it, I get to ask them a question as to how they think that, why they think that, and then we can decide what needs to get done. And this, so the first thing you need to know about EOS is it is uncomfortable. Um, The most successful teams in the world, I believe, are extremely accountable and transparent. The Navy SEALs don't come back and say, hey, you kind of blew it. You know, like remember when you were diffusing that bomb and like you kind of pushed me in the way of it, like that wasn't cool. Like they don't, they don't have the opportunity to be nice about this stuff, right? Like this is life and death for them. So when they come back from a mission and debrief, if you don't get it, you don't want it and you don't have the capacity for it, they tell you, right? And it's not to say that they're kicking you off the team. It's to say that they need to find another role for you in the team because you're, you're not going to work, right? And that not working could get somebody killed. And here you're going to waste time or money or effort or energy. And depending on what you do, it could also get somebody killed. So just important um, transparency. And we do this every 90 days. So every 90 days, we have these extremely uncomfortable conversations about if we adhere to the core values, right? And everybody votes on that. Yes, you adhere to the five core values. We vote on it. And then you get to say, how do you think I'm not if I don't? And then also do you GWC it? Questions there. I think it's a great way to continually vet your team and, you know, uh, bring them through a process that's both self-discerning and also encouraging them to grow in their various roles and the gifts uh, and talents that God's put in their life. So good stuff. Yeah. And here's the other piece of it, right? If you don't get your job, I mean, think about this from the employee perspective, right? If you don't get it, if you don't want it and you don't have the capacity for it, how much are you loving coming to work? You're not, right? And it shows in your performance, but it also dictates your attitude and how you're moving through life. So if you don't get it, want it, like, so it's, it's as much of a, hey, and I, we did this at our last quarterly. I was like, I don't want it. I, yeah, I get it and I have capacity for it, but I don't want it. And, and that's good because that's healthy because if I'm doing things that I don't want to do, I'm not going to be doing them well. So, yeah, so that, that to me is a big deal and like how you analyze those things and go through it continually, I think is, uh, is very helpful. Is that it, Seal, on people? For, for people analyzer, yeah, G, GWC. And I can, you know, give you guys a testimony of that. Like Steven's like, oh, it's really uncomfortable. For me, I love it because it gives us a chance and opportunity to, to open up and I'm not as extroverted as Steven. So it's good 
to you know communicate that during these quarterly meetings um but also it gets you know gives me a chance to like as you and it said like hey you want to know what i really and i'll show you guys the chart too like i'm good at it but i really don't like doing this so it, it creates a platform to voice like these are the items that you know if i can delegate this is what i'd like to delegate so just opens up the conversation for your team found it found it very helpful yeah and we've had to think a little bit abstractly about how to conquer some of these things without hiring a full-time employee right so when i was <clears throat> out buying houses right years ago and i had to go out and meet the client face to face right i wasn't the guy to write all the details of that meeting into the crm so we use an app called Voxer, which is basically a little walkie talkie. And I would walk out and I would Voxer either Celia or a virtual assistant that I was paying a very nominal rate to per hour and say, okay, so we just met with Mr. Johnson. He's been, you know, his wife of 30 years just passed. He needs to sell this because he's moving to Florida with his kids. And this is the timeline and here's some of the issues and blah, blah, blah. And guess what? In two minutes, I explained what happened in that appointment and it made it into the CRM without me, who's not good at it, touching it. So there's little things as you start to recognize like where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are to create some guardrails for yourself so that you can insulate those things from getting lost, but still get done. And then, yeah, delegate and elevate. We have all of our people do this stuff. So like of what you're doing, what do you love and you're great at? What do you like and you're good at? What do you don't like, but you're good at? And what do you don't like and not good at? And as an owner, my first thing to look at is that bottom right, how do I get rid of this stuff, right? Because it's creating mental drag on that employee. It's creating some level of discomfort. And sometimes it might not be able to be done, right? But I want them to recognize like, hey, I, I see the stuff that you don't like and over the next quarter or over the next year, we're going to work towards making this get off your plate, right? So I need you to figure out how you're going to delegate this and who you should be delegating it to so that you're not doing the things that you're not good at and that you don't like. Because not only does that create drag on them, but it creates drag on the business or the ministry. So super, super helpful for us. So we have a couple other PDF sitting here. And like I said, I'll be sure to share this with you. I think this is pretty cool too. Is anybody, is anyone using EOS right now for a level 10 meeting? Nope. So like I said, when we started this meeting, right, you either do or don't do EOS. So if this is, sounds like something that makes sense and you want to explore it, um, you can go to EOSworldwide.com. The books are traction, um, Rocket fuel. Rocket fuel. Yeah. They'll give you a good idea of how this stuff gets run, right? And if you decide to implement it, you can self-implement. We started to do that too. Oh, there you go. Bethany's got traction. So it also gives you a meeting cadence of like, when are you doing the meetings and what are these meetings supposed to be and how are they supposed to get run? And the L10 meeting, the, L, the level 10 meeting is the, the most important thing that we do in our business. The annual projections are great. The quarterly rocks that go into the weekly scorecard, all of that stuff is great, right? And we can get into nuts and bolts of that stuff with you guys if you so choose. But the most important thing is this level 10 meeting. And we call it a level 10 meeting or they call it a level 10 meeting because it simply is what the goal is, right? We are trying to get to level 10. So every... Every meeting is the same. It's a five minute, it starts the same. So for us, we do a, uh, a 10 o'clock L10 meeting. We actually start at 9.30. I forget the times. We start at 10, we do uh, 30 minutes of prayer and then we have a 90 minute L10 meeting. So every meeting is 90 minutes. It starts the same way. Segway, we go around the room real quick. It's five minutes. Give me a business win. Give me a personal win. Why do you do this, right? Psychologically, in these meetings, typically you start talking about all the problems that you have to deal with. Well, that's great. And that's how you move the ship forward. But without that rah-rah five minutes of what are we winning at, it's really a pretty dreary meeting, right? So we spend five minutes, business win, personal win, and that's just our own personal cadence. We like to hold each other accountable personally. Like, how are you doing in your personal life with your 
life, with your kids, with your health goals, with your eating goals, with your exercise goals, whatever they are, because I believe happy employees and balanced employees uh, in their personal lives make better employees in their work lives. And I, I assume the same is true in ministry. You guys don't care if you're saving the world and somebody's marriage is falling apart, right? So giving people the opportunities to make sure that those things aren't falling out of place and keeping the pyramid uh, in the right direction is important for us. So business win, personal win. Scorecard, we create a scorecard. So every person has three to five numbers that they track every single week that we put into an Excel spreadsheet. And at the end of the week, they fill it in. And on Monday morning, we check it, check it off. You know, how you would organize that in your own organization, I don't know. For us, let's say sales calls, it's like, we have to contact eight people a week, right? We have to have eight calls a day or whatever, whatever the metric is, right? And if those metrics don't get completed that week, we just want to know why. This is not the time to talk about why, by the way. Five minutes is just to show everybody where you're at in your scorecard. Did you hit it? Did you not? If you did not, you will add it to the list that you're, of the um, IDS, which is called Issues, Discuss, and Solve. We'll get to that in a minute. Rock review. The rock review is a 90 minute or a 90 day rock. That rock is the priority for you. Every person has one to three rocks that they are responsible for in the organization that will move the ball forward for the organization for their annualized goals, right? Maybe that's raising a certain amount of capital. Maybe that's touching a certain number of people. Maybe that is you know, outbound calls, whatever it might be, is that one person is responsible for one to three rocks that will take 90 days. And usually you do three to six milestones within that rock per person to know if you're on track, right? If you have a 90 day rock, every two weeks, you should be checking in and making sure that you're on track for those things. You don't want to find out that somebody's off track on a rock on day 89, right? Because you can't help them then. But if you're finding out every two weeks exactly where they're at, then you can. Customer employee headlines. This is typically good. Sometimes it could be a challenge. But throughout the week, our team tracks what they're hearing from customers and employees. So what are we hearing from our supporters? What are we hearing from people in the field? Right. And sometimes that's like praise reports. And sometimes that is this is where you guys drop the ball and I don't like it. And sometimes that is, you know, I wish that this process wasn't done this way. Like whatever that stuff is gets captured in employee headlines. We'll go through all of it, customer employee headlines. We'll go through all of it and it either gets put into an issue or it's just something that we say, okay, cool. We, we heard that that got said. To-do list, we track everything in Asana. So all of our to-dos collectively as a team are all put there. So we know, like I know everything that Celia has to do this week. She knows everything that I have to do. Not that we're going in and checking on each other, but it's helpful because at the end of the week, we're just saying, here's all the stuff that I got done. If a task is supposed to be done on Thursday and on Friday, it's red. Guess what? That's right. Accountability. We all call each other out on it. Why is that task red? No red tasks in this organization. And uh, if it is red and there's a reason, let's put it on the issues list so we can discuss it and solve it so it never happens again. And then uh, IDS, issue, discuss, solve. This is the crux of the level 10 meeting. This is where it all comes out, right? This is where everything comes to a head and no stone is left unturned. Now, hardest part of this that I don't believe happens in many other organizations is come in, is naming the issue, right? Telling everybody what it is. So naming an issue, right? And actually calling out what that issue is. Here's the hardest part. In the first week that you start implementing this, you'll say like, here's a problem. Good. Why is it a problem? That next level will give you a deeper understanding as to why it's a problem. Who is it a problem with? Who was the root of the problem? What is the root of the problem? Now we're getting to the issue, right? Again, you have to create that transparency and accountability within the team for you to effectively have IDS work. Because if you're just gonna name problems and then tell you what Band-Aid to put on the problem, but the issue still lives on, you haven't solved the issue. And that's why I like what this is called. It's issue, discuss, solve. What does solve mean? Solve means it never comes up again. And I don't mean like it doesn't come up for a couple of weeks. 
I mean, it never comes up again. So sometimes dealing with an issue means going through this problem to the extent that it is painful, right? But I promise you it's worth it because when you start dealing with issues that don't come up again and you've really solved for them, then you know that the new things that come up are important to deal with and you can prioritize those things. So let's say we have 10 issues that come up throughout the week. When we start IDS, we spend a couple minutes and we just prioritize them. Like what is the top priority to deal with? Because you only have 60 minutes. These meetings do not run past 90 minutes for efficiency purposes of everybody's lives and the business. It can't. So you prioritize what they are and you go through that issue until it is solved, right? And maybe that means, sometimes it means a separate one-on-one meeting with somebody, right? To say, okay, this marketing thing needs to get done. But a solution is always had to where it doesn't end up on the issues list again next week. And this is, this is a tough process, right? Seal, I mean, it, it, the first couple of weeks, it becomes, it's just, it's hard because you're really pushing on making sure that you've rooted out the real problem. It gets easier over time. Now we call things out and we're just like, okay, well, we're still waiting on this because of this person. So that, you know, and, you know, we're in the process of firing a third party attorney right now who's been dragging something out for nine weeks. Four weeks ago, we decided, well, once this project is over, he's fired, right? So we've solved that problem and it won't come back. And that's not the way we like to solve problems, but sometimes you have to, right? Because it's, it's now creating a drag on the organization. And it's, it, you know, I, I always think of what Nehemiah says, right? Like, no, I will not come down. I have an important work to do. I can't come down and talk to you. If anybody else externally is creating a drag on our organization's like purpose, you can't work with us. And that's just because that's what's our, that's our call, right? So sometimes those IDS has come to a head where it's like, nope, we can't work with that person anymore. And sometimes they come with really, really fruitful things of like, well, why is that happening? Well, it's happening because I don't have the tools, skill set, money, finance, whatever it is behind me to get this thing accomplished. And then you get to figure out, okay, maybe that's a quarterly rock we have to have to deal with next quarter because somebody doesn't have a skill set. Maybe we need to hire somebody. They, you know, different things come out of these conversations. And everybody's involved, by the way, right? The whole like, let's do these one-on-one closed door conversations with employees. We don't do that, right? We're the Navy SEALs. Everybody's talking about everything in front of everybody so that we all have an opinion and we all know how to row together and can hold each other accountable to those purposes. So love IDS. It's a 60 minute process. Again, prioritize which ones, go through them. Don't move on until it is absolutely solved. And we've even had people go, hey, I don't think that's solved right? Five people on the team say, we're good to move on. And one person goes, I don't think so. Okay. Why not? Why isn't it solved yet? Right. And then you kind of get a little bit deeper. So anyway, so that's IDS. After you IDS, we conclude, we just do a recap of the to-do lists. And then it's a five minute, like go around everybody. Good. Everybody know what they're doing for the next week. Cool. Let's rate the meeting. Right. And we rate the meeting between one and 10. And that's not necessarily about how you feel about the meeting, right? We don't have emotional scorecards. Oftentimes I will feel coming out of a meeting that we just kind of got beat up a little bit and it's a level 10 meeting and it's a level 10 meeting because everything got accomplished at the same time, same cadence. Everybody has rocks moving. Everybody has to do's done. We, we solved a lot of issues and now we can move on kind of fresh. We start every week that way on Monday which is fun actually for for us because I don't know about you guys, but on Monday morning, my phone lights up from nine to noon because everybody's hitting it. They're back in the office. They're going to call you. They're ready to get things moving. And my whole team is unreachable. My whole team is unreachable until noon because we're all in this meeting. That's the other thing is uh, phones down, no electronics. You get called out if you start doing this in our meetings. You start doing this and you're on the call, you get called out. I'll I'll take screenshots of you and send it to you while you're on the meeting. So it'll pop up on your phone that you're looking at. Like, Hey, what's up? Because if you're going to be here, right, be here. Because it's disrespectful to the rest of the team and we can't effectively IDS anything if part of the team is checked out. Right. So you're going to be here. Let's be here. Um, And if you can't be here, don't accept my meeting invites. Right. Tell me, no, I can't be there. I can't be present in that meeting because I have other things that are going to distract me. Okay, fine. We'll reschedule. 
So this has been an, a game changer for us. We ran our, ran our business like this. <sighs> for six years, we did not use this. And since, and now I don't know how exactly correlative this is, right? But from the six year period of time till now, right? We have 10 X our business from using this program till now. It is a game changer. And we had to fire half of the team that would not get on board with this. They did not like it. So when I say you have to do it or you don't do it, it's literally an organizational understanding as to how you're going to run or not run an organization. It's just, we see an immense value to it. It has made things much easier. Issues come to the surface much faster and they get solved much quicker. So, you know, I encourage you to, to read through it and see if it's a fit for you guys. If you have any questions on how to implement it, let us know. There are third party implementers that'll come to your location with your whole team, shut you down for three day workshop and, create everything from that accountability chart to the core values, you know, if you, and some of you have some of these things already in place, but they will tighten it up. They will go through it all with you and get it to a place of implementation in about 72 hours. But we're happy to, to share kind of what we've learned through the process as well. Um, and everybody knows as they're going through the interview process with us, that this is how we run. Like, and I love it because it gives people such an expectation of how tight everything is because everything is tracked, right? And what gets measured matters. Thoughts, questions, feelings? Just two additional little points that you weren't able to cover. Um, so we recently, well, Stephen and Travis recently hired an executive assistant who actually sits in on the level 10 meeting now. And she'll actually create the to-dos based upon like our rocks or our IDS discussion. And she'll go right into Asana and create the to-dos and tasks for us. So we're not writing everything down, taking notes, going back in, you know, later on. So it's been super helpful. And then also how Stephen had said, like to focus in on the meeting, no phones. We also have certain notification times that we check our phones, check our emails, reply to emails. So we try to keep that. Um, like three to four times per day. So this is big, right? If you guys are, so we're big proponents of being proactive, not reactive. The whole world is vying for your time, right? Whether it's Facebook, Twitter, your text messages, your emails, whatever it is, the whole world is trying to steal your time, which means trying to make sure that you don't get your to-dos done. That's how I feel, right? So there's easy ways to kind of insulate yourself from those, but they're hard. So easy, but hard, simple, not easy, I guess is the, is the best way to put it, right? So what we do is on our team, we know that we're checking notifications, which are emails, boxers, text messages, and voicemails, typically three to four times a day. And we all have a notification checking schedule that everybody knows about, right? If it's urgent, you have to pick up the phone and call me like a human being, right? You can't text me. The text messages, boxers, those quick hit communication policy things are getting checked for me at 9.30, one o'clock, four o'clock. That's it. You have three times throughout the day. I'm going to check it for 10 minutes. I'll probably respond. It's in airplane mode the other times, right? When I'm doing meetings like this, my phone's not ringing. It's on do not disturb. When I'm doing my tasks and I have an hour block of like, I, I have to put my head down and knock out a bunch of tasks. I'm on do not disturb. And my team can't reach me. Nobody can reach me because what I found is as entrepreneurs, and probably you guys feel this way too, is that if I'm unreachable, the world is going to end if I can't get reached. It's probably very important. Well, I was born in 1982. I still had uh, answering machines when I went to college, not cell phones and pagers. So like, I knew that the world wouldn't end. When my mom and dad went out on a date night, they gave the babysitter the name and number of the restaurant, which by the way, I now do because I want to leave my car, my phone in the car for date night. So here's the name of the restaurant that you can reach me at. The babysitters who are like 15 are like, wait, what? I have to call a restaurant, talk to a human being? Yes, you do. But same thing for us, right? Like you need to just set the expectation as to when you can be reached. Now, it doesn't matter. Like Celia knows if she double dials me, right? If she calls my phone and then calls my phone again, I'm going to pick up, right? Most of us know that we'll look at it and say, okay, this is an emergency or it's not. But what it does is, I, and you can look at your own life, right? Overwhelmingly, the amount of contact that you get is not urgent right now. 
We have a communication policy that literally in the text message or in the Voxer says priority, urgent, or everything else. We just put P, U, or E, E, so that when I look at my phone, I know if it's a priority. A priority means it's tied to a rock. Urgent means this needs to get done quickly. Everything else is still needs to get done, but not a priority, right? You can wait to check this out. And like we put these little systems in place because I care about my time. I care about my family's time. I want to be proactive, not reactive on these things. And if you allow other people to come in and steal your time all the time, it will happen over and over. So yeah, the notification checking policy, I think has been very helpful. The communication policy, uh, Celia can post in whatever Dropbox or whatever you guys share, just to kind of give an idea as to whether or not that's something you want to implement. I know this is drinking from a fire hose and this is four years, by the way, of everything that we have tried to implement and have done over time. So it's not that all of this is a light switch and it needs to get implemented tomorrow, right? Pick, pick what is important to you, right? The accountability chart for me is like a very big place to start because it creates vision. It makes you see how many seats you're sitting in and how many directions you're getting pulled into. And then it's probably not reasonable, right? To be in all of those seats. And even if it means that you're going to stay there for the next six months or a year, that's fine, but you can see that person later on down the line. So helpful questions. Everybody's muted. So I have yourself. a question. Hey, Terry. Hi. Hey, I'm sorry. I got in here late and I couldn't be oh, on the good. last one. I was traveling, but, and I wanted Rudy to explain what was going on with our nonprofit. I just want to say we're blessed and honored to, to be a part of this team. This is fantastic because, you know, as an entrepreneur and running a nonprofit, you're kind of running solo all the time. And it's nice to have other people to bounce off of. And Celia has been a, an incredible blessing to us as well. I just wanted to make sure I mentioned Same. that. There are two questions I have. I didn't, I guess you showed the accountability chart when I was on just a phone call. Yeah. Celia, is there a way you can, you can share that with us? Definitely. I'm going to, I'm going to send over a recap with links to each and every uh, PDF form, and then I'm going to upload them to Dropbox as well. Excellent. Okay. And then the, there's two more questions. You mentioned a to-do list you put in, and I can't remember the name of it. Is it like a Slack, but what is it called? Is yeah. So we, we use Asana. I know other companies use like monday.com, Slack. So Slack is cool for communication. I don't think it's great for to-dos because it gets okay. lost in the shuffle, right? As you, Asana... Okay. So like, I'll show you real quick our Asana. And now, Asana so, is pretty easy to build out. Okay. So like we just created a board. Oh, wow. Right. So like oh, nice. it starts over here. You click on the L10. This is our level 10 meeting. Okay. And then it has our Zoom link, the Bible study link, <clears throat> and segue headlines. Like this is mm. exactly what we talked about before. And then if there's headlines throughout the week, somebody will come in and just kind of add the headlines, right? And then you have rocks. So we built this out for EOS, right? As you can see, it kind of aligns with everything that we were just talking about with the EOS. So we have mm -hmm. everybody's rock, right? This is me. I only have one rock, which is to get our new salesperson autonomous. So as you might imagine, that's a 90 day oh. job, right? So then you have everybody else's rocks in here with like little subtasks. So you can click on here and then you'll see all the subtasks and the milestones the two week mm -hmm. milestones that we talked about too. And then to do's. So we literally go in here and we add to do's constantly. So we're really not doing anything in here. Like send emails is not in here. Right. Right. But like create a fund webinar. I have to do that by the 22nd. So that's a to do. And then once you move, like once they're done, we drag them. You can drag stuff in here to where it'll move around. Got it. Okay. Which makes it pretty cool. And then this is the IDS, right? So as issues pop up during the week, we go in here and like you'll see our communication policy is on our IDS because mm -hmm. guess, guess who wasn't using it? <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> right? But, but it's important, right? So everybody called me out on it. They're like, hey, I don't think we're using the communication policy. So that this is, mm -hmm. and then here, look, if you see something, say something, add to issues. Like we're not... We're not here to like let people off because what it does is it creates stress by reducing clarity. The reason that everything exists in our business is to increase clarity and decrease stress. Mm. So this, this does that. And then EOS, we have the accountability chart in here, the compass. Mm. So notification okay. checking schedule. So 
We've used Asana. It's free, I think. Oh, this good. This is the free version that we use. There's and an we still use the free version. Oh, very nice. And then what I wanted to also go back to is your EOS. Is that a monthly subscription, kind of like a CRM or? No, so EOS is just an entrepreneur operating system. It's how you run the business. It's the cadence of the meetings. It's the L10s. Mm-hmm. It's the accountability chart. It's just an operating system for the business. It doesn't cost anything beyond the two books that you're going to buy. Okay. And that's the Rocket Fuel by Wickman and Winters. Is that yep. correct? And, and then the other one? And traction. Welcome. Traction. Okay. Also by Wickman. Oh, this is such a blessing because I've been kind of doing everything by myself. And that's and that, so this is why we wanted to start this, right? Is when we started yeah. our business, Travis and I did our fix and flip and wholesale business as real estate investors for five and a half years, completely on our own, trying to invent all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I spent a good, you know, good portion of money to join this mastermind of other people that were doing our business. And they gave us all this information. And I was like, I've been living on an island, an entrepreneurial island for almost half a decade and been beating myself up thinking that I needed to create all this stuff from scratch. Well, no, right? The the word tells us there's nothing new under the sun. So I I thought it was going to be super helpful for just everybody on here to say, this is what's working for me. This is what's not working for me. And everybody can kind of take little tidbits of what's working and implement it into their own organization. And hopefully it exacerbates the growth of all your organizations much quicker because our business hockey stick once we started doing this. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing all this. Yeah. Our pleasure. Cool. I think we're just about wrapping up. Seal, anything else? Does anyone else have any questions? I know it's a lot of info. Don't be shy. We still got 15 minutes carved out. So if you have anything that might be helpful and probably helpful with somebody else. If anything pops up, feel free to email me. I will send over this recap, uh, hopefully by tomorrow. And then for next month, I'll try and invite another guest speaker on. So I'm thinking maybe Nina from Boldly and Co. I think it will be a good follow-up to today's discussion. So it's all about, she's a productivity expert and you want to talk about tidbits little pieces of gold. She is the lady. Um, yeah. And she really helps with, um, with kind of a well-rounded life. I think as ministers and entrepreneurs and missionaries, like burnout is a real thing, right? So how do we insulate ourselves from burnout? How do we create the pieces of our lives that like show it next week, but like our whole team has 30 day, six month and one year goals for nine different sections of their life, right? And we hold each other accountable to these goals on a weekly basis, which is not a professional is professional development is one of the nine things, right? It's um, nutrition, it's surroundings. Like my, my team held me accountable until I got my office painted because that was one of my goals. My, one of my 30 day like things, right? was like to get this done. I mean, who walks through their house and is like, man, I really wish I could hang those pictures up or I really wish I did this. Well, guess what that does? It creates stress, whether you know it or not, right? So Nina has this amazing system to just lay all this stuff out for you so that you can hold yourself accountable to these things. And they're very measurable, tangible things to where you don't get overwhelmed because there is an inverse relationship between clarity and stress. This just helps create a lot more clarity in all the different segments of your life that you know you want to move the needle on. And it's been incredible. So yeah, we'll get her on. Definitely. All right. Cool. Nana, oh, Nana Donna's get up. It's out. <laughs> Hi, Nana Donna. Would, hey. <laughs> would you be so kind to pray us out today? I would love to. <laughs> Father, we praise your name for this meeting today. We praise you for each and every one that is here and for uh, just the way that you are moving in each person's ministry and their life and their in their uh, business and God we trust you we stand on your word and we stand on your promises and we trust you and we uh, are just appreciate the honor that you've given us to be here today and we ask you to go with each and every one to open doors for each person here and that you would have them to go through and close doors that you would have them not to go through 
And Lord, we trust you. We praise you. We worship you. And we just thank you for this opportunity to be together today. And uh, we trust that we will see each one again next month. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Happy Easter to you and your families. Happy Look forward Easter. to seeing you next month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's, uh, the meeting today was a 10, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give it 10. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, things will pop up as you start implementing this, so feel free to reach out to us. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm on Voxer, which is like that little walkie-talkie thing that we talked about, and then you can just email me and Celia at any time, too. My notification schedule is 930. One and four. So, <laughs> give me three hours to respond to you. And Celia, right, you everybody. Put the, the link for Boxer in there as well. Yeah, I'll send out all of the links of all the resources. Fantastic. You guys are such a blessing. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Thank right. you. Excuse so me. Another guest speaker on. So, I'm thinking maybe Nina from Boldly and Co. I think it'll be a good follow up to today's discussion. So, it's all about, she's a productivity expert. And you want to talk about tidbits, little pieces of gold. She is the lady. Um, yeah. And she really helps with, um, with kind of a well-rounded life. I think as ministers and entrepreneurs and missionaries, like burnout is a real thing, right? So how do we insulate ourselves from burnout? How do we create the pieces of our lives that like, and we can, show it next week, but like our whole team has 30 day, six month and one year goals for nine different sections of their life. Right. And we hold each other accountable to these goals on a weekly basis, which is not a professional is professional development is one of the nine things, right? It's um, nutrition, it's surroundings. Like my, my team held me accountable until I got my office painted. Because that was one of my goals, my, one of my 30 day like things, right? was like to get this done. I mean, who walks through their house and is like, man, I really wish I could hang those pictures up or I really wish I did this. Well, guess what that does? It creates stress, whether you know it or not, right? So Nina has this amazing system to just lay all this stuff out for you so that you can hold yourself accountable to these things. And they're very measurable, tangible things to where you don't get overwhelmed because there is an inverse relationship between clarity and stress. This just helps create a lot more clarity in all the different segments of your life that you know you want to move the needle on. And it's been incredible. So yeah, we'll get her on. Yeah, definitely. All right. Cool. Um, Nana, oh, Nana Donna's getting up. She's out. <laughs> he opened the door and the dog was running away. So <laughs> sorry. All right. She's back. Hi, Nana Donna. Would, hey. <laughs> would you be so kind to pray us out today? I would love to. <laughs> Father, we praise your name for this meeting today. We praise you for each and every one that is here. And for uh, just the way that you are moving in each person's ministry and their life and their, in their, um, their uh, business. And God, we trust you. We stand on your word and we stand on your promises and we trust you. And we uh, are just appreciate the honor that you've given us to be here today. And we ask you to go with each and every one to open doors for each person here and that you would have them to go through and close doors that you would have them not to go through. And Lord, we trust you. We praise you. We worship you. And we just thank you for this this opportunity to be together today and uh, we trust that we will see each one again next month in Jesus holy name amen 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 thank you everyone happy Easter to you and your families happy look forward Easter. to seeing you next month okay thank you thank you so much this uh, the meeting today was a 10 Steve <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give it 10. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, things will pop up as you start implementing this, so feel free to reach out to us. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm on Voxer, which is like that little walkie-talkie thing that we talked about, and then you can just email me and Celia at any time, too. Um, my notification schedule is 9.30, 1 and 4. So. <laughs> give me three hours to respond to you. So.
And Celia, right, you're going to put the, the link for Boxer in there as well? Yeah, I'll send out all of the links of all the resources. Fantastic. You, you guys are such a blessing. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Thank all you. Right. So long. Thanks for listening to the Free From Wall Street podcast. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review and let us know what you think. 